Hello guys, Colin here, and today I'm tackling your tatas, the questions that at this stage you are too afraid to ask. Jai G asks, what does true bypass mean in pedals? Now I covered this before in my Truth About True Bypass video, which you can watch here. But seeing as that video is now more than three years old, which basically means it's ancient on the internet, perhaps it's time to revisit the topic. Now a big deal is often made about True Bypass by certain pedal companies using it as a massive marketing leverage to convince consumers that their products are better than the competition. But is this really the case? Is True Bypass better? And what's the alternative? To start to answer these questions, let's look at how pedals work. Oh, but before we go any further, allow me to talk about Skillshare, who have made this video possible. Advancing your skills is important. Whether it be to grow your career, improve your creative projects, or simply to satisfy your curiosity, with Skillshare you can join classes and communities to help you thrive. With more than 25,000 classes on everything from music production to creative writing, you'll be able to brush up on old skills and start honing new ones. Search engine optimization might not be the sexiest subject to learn about, but it's an incredibly important field of study if I want people to find my content online. Hence why I've been watching Rand Fishkin's introduction to SEO. Gotta get those first page search results for hot Scottish YouTube gang. Skillshare are offering a two months free trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description of this video. So whether you want to learn graphic design or filmmaking, Skillshare is the place to learn. Click on the link and get your free trial today. The majority of effects pedal circuits will feature an input buffer. This is part of the circuit that transforms the signal from the guitar's pickups into something that the pedal is happy to work with. Guitar pickups output a high impedance signal, but the types of circuits used in effects pedals prefer to see a low impedance signal. Except fuzz. Fuzz is weird, but that's a story for another time. So to make the high impedance guitar signal play nice with a low impedance effects circuit, a buffer is used to convert the high impedance into low impedance. A buffer can be implemented in one of two ways. A buffered bypass pedal has the guitar signal run through the buffer regardless of whether the effect is engaged or not. To oversimplify, the buffer comes before the switch. Guitar into pedal input, input into buffer, buffer into switch. If the effect is bypassed, then the switch will send the signal to the pedal's output, but if the effect is engaged, the switch will send the signal through the effect circuit before reaching the output. This allows for smaller and cheaper switches to be used, utilising Jifet switching on the circuit board to make the switch, rather than more expensive and physically larger mechanical switches. So using this method can not only save the manufacturer money, but keeps a buffer active in your signal chain at all times. We'll talk more about the advantages and disadvantages of that later. True bypass means that when the effect is bypassed, your signal is going nowhere near the pedal's circuit board. Usually requiring a much larger and relatively expensive mechanical switch, true bypass puts the switch before the buffer. Guitar to pedal input, input to switch. If the effect is bypassed and the switch routes the signal directly to the pedal's output, but if the effect is engaged, then the switch sends a signal to the buffer and then on to the rest of the pedal circuit. While there is no componentry to mess around with your pure guitar tone, that doesn't mean that your signal is protected against degradation. True bypass can't protect against the capacitance effect of cables. Cables behave like capacitors. They contain long conductive wires separated by an insulation layer, the very definition of a capacitor. And just like the capacitor in the tone control of your guitar, cables will bleed treble to ground. Over short distances, this isn't much of an issue, but the longer the cable you use, the more prominent the effect becomes. Very long cable runs can have the same effect as turning your tone control to zero. The capacitive effect is most prominent with high impedance signals, so only using true bypass pedals with long cables offers no protection against this kind of treble loss. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 
low impedance signals can survive very much longer cable rides before these losses become relevant. Much longer distances, in fact, than any realistic guitar cable will be. It's for this reason that having a buffer active somewhere in the circuit, preferably as early as possible in the signal chain, protects against these losses further down the line. <laughs> have an always on pedal on your board then that will act as your buffer but it's worth remembering that not all buffers are created equal. Some buffers are notorious tone suckers, decimating the signal in their own right. The Dunlop Crybaby is one of the worst, hence why the true bypass modification is so popular for this pedal. To paraphrase Theresa May, no buffer is better than a bad buffer. <laughs> Although the best solution by far is to have a high quality, dedicated buffer right at the start of your signal chain, especially if you're using a lot of pedals and long cable runs. Many companies make these, TC Electronic has the Bonafide buffer, and I'm using this tiny crackwork buffer under my main board. You can see a dedicated video about it here. So when it comes to true bypass or buffered bypass, there's no definitive correct answer. While buffers are necessary, not all of them are great, and sometimes they can mess up your signal when the effects are bypassed. True bypass gets around about this issue entirely, but it doesn't protect against the capacitive effects of long cables that leads to treble loss. Personally, I like to use a dedicated, good quality buffer at the start of my signal chain and then use as few buffered bypass pedals after that as possible. True bypass is great for not messing with your signal after you've corrected it with a good quality buffer, but really, we can all worry too much about these things. While I've modified pedals to eliminate detrimental buffers in the past, and it's worth listening out for these to address them when necessary, it's not to your benefit to be overly concerned about whether a pedal is or isn't true bypass. What is important is to understand the differences so that you can build an effective pedal board around the pedals that you have, and it shouldn't be a deal breaker when buying your new favourite pedal. If you have any questions of your own that you are too afraid to ask, please do leave them in the comments section and perhaps they'll become the topic of a future Tata video. It's never too late to learn. And if you've liked this video and you want to see more content from me, then you can hit that subscribe button. My Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff, t-shirts are available and there's other videos that you might not have seen. But that's all for now guys, keep it loud and I'll see you later. It's all about impedance again!